Okay, so this is going to be a tutorial on how to create a digital painting. Um, if you don't have Photoshop, then photop.com is a really good alternative. Um, and I'm just going to go through um, how to create a digital landscape painting using this program. Um, Photoshop is pretty much exactly the same as this. Um, it has a really similar layout, so it shouldn't be too dissimilar if you have Photoshop and you're not quite sure how to use it, then this tutorial will still be really relevant. Um, so the first thing to do is once you loaded up photop.com, what you want to do is make a new uh, canvas or a new piece of paper. So to do that, you go to File, New, then go to Print down here and make sure you've got an A4 page and then Create. Now, this is obviously in a portrait layout. So in order to change it, you just want to go to. Oh, hang on. You want to go to image, transform and rotate. Um, if it did come up with that block message before, then you will have a padlock on your what's called a layer here. Uh, you just need to click the padlock to get rid of it and that will unlock your layer. Um, what you want to do now is to play around with and experiment with all of the brush tools um, that you've got at the side here. So you'll be able to see this paintbrush and you'll be able to select the brush tool or the pencil tool, whichever you want to use. And you'll be able to select your colours down here. Uh, what you might want to start off with is a background colour. Um, and so in order to do that, you want to click this gradient here click and hold and you'll be able to find the paint bucket tool and what that will do will fill any space or any shape so for example i might want to start off with a blue background because i'm going to start off with the sky or something like that um not quite happy with that color so i'm just going to change it here there we go OK, so once you've done that, then you can go back onto the brush tool and here at the top, you can change your actual brush. It's a little bit slow because. Um, because it's photo.com. <laughs> so what you can do is you can change the size of it here from really small to fill in really big areas or you can change the shape of your brush so you can make it look a little bit more like a chalk pastel or an oil pastel or uh, make it really um, clear or really blurred. Uh, let me just show you the effects of that. So what I might want to start off with is maybe some green areas where I've got like a field or something. So I might want to add in uh, some hills here. If I wanted to just then to fill that area, I'm just going to make that really big so it's quicker. I might want to then add in some texture to make it look a little bit like grass, maybe. And I can see that automatically my brush size has gone to seven. So I'm just going to make that a lot larger. And already you can see how that brush is made up. So I might want to stamp that or I might want to draw with it. I'm just going to experiment with different ways of creating different marks. And then what I'm going to do is just continually keep changing my brush. I want to make it really blurred this time. So for that, I might want to create a cloud maybe with that uh, type of brush. So I want to create a background and then layer up some lighter colours maybe. I 
and maybe even with some darker colours. See what kind of effect that has. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just keep going and experiment with those tools. If you want to use an eraser even as well, so you click the eraser tool, and again you can change the size or the shape of that. So um, for example, I might want to go back to a really pure white behind these clouds. Um, that will take out the whole of your painting. And then the checkered bit at the back is like, it's showing you that it's really see-through. So there's not even like a white bit behind it. But if you print it, then it will be white. Um, if you don't like that or you want to make sure that you can just see what you've got and maybe add in uh, a white as well, this is where you can go back a step here where it says history. So say I didn't like any of those clouds, just go up and get rid of them here. But I quite like them, so I'm going to stay with them there. And then maybe just get rid of that see-through effect there. Okay, so I'm just going to finish this now at my own pace and I'll speed it up for you. But you can do literally whatever you want with this. Basically, just experiment and have fun. Okay, so I've just stopped to have a look at my clouds and I'm not really happy with them. So what I've done is added in a, another bit of colour over the top that's a little bit crisper. So I've made my edge a little bit harder and I've made my brush much bigger. And then I just need to match that colour to that. Add in a bit more colour there. Then what I'm going to do is blur these two bits together. So what I'm going to do is go into here and use the smudge tool. And then what that does is it drags the colours together. And it's sort of like there's paint on the page. And I'm pushing it around with brush, my finger. And you can sort of create this smudged blurred effect and it sort of creates those sort of wispy cloud like textures as well which is quite nice just trying to get rid of that rough edge there like that and then do the same over here we'll just drag the two sort of colors into each other It's quite nice as well as if you make a mistake, you just sort of blur it back out. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save it. And there's two ways you can do this. If you go to File, Export as JPEG, I'll save it as an image file. And before it will come up like this, and the quality probably won't, won't be all the way to 100, so just make sure that it's at 100. It's on zero, it goes really pixelated. So if you go to 100, it's getting rid of, rid of as many pixels as it can. And if you just click Save, it will come into your downloads bar here. And you can open that and view that and print it as well if you want to by clicking the printer button there. 
And then what you can do is if you're not 100% happy with it, but you don't have any more time to edit it, what you can do is go to File and then Save as Photoshop File or Save as PSD. And what will happen there is it will save as a Photoshop file. And then what I can do is if I close that down, then if I go to File, Open, go into my Downloads folder and open that downloaded Photoshop file, what it will do is open back up for you so that you can re-edit it at any time that you like. So hopefully this tutorial has been really helpful for you um, and sort of exposed you to a new program if you haven't used it before. Basically, what you need to do is to have a go with the brush tool and having an experiment with the different types of brushes, the different sizes and the different colours and seeing what you can do to create different textures and to create different sorts of imagery. You can do a landscape, you could do a flower, you could do anything to do with nature and to do with this project um, and maybe even have a go at recreating or um, maybe recreating one of the artist's work or maybe uh, recreating like your garden or something in this program or it can be an imaginary landscape like mine is completely up to you.